Telescope being assembled, and we're just finding it very the, the uh, geometries. Just to pull the geometries back in, it's interesting they're using hexagonal mirrors in this configuration here. Welcome to the April 10th edition of the Electric View. I'm Neil Thompson. Today we have David, Buddy, Edwin, Heather, Peter, and Richard. We will be discussing space telescopes and the new 4K moon video that shows the formations up close and personal on the moon's surface. We're going to ask how they were made. Please don't forget to like and subscribe below. That we're, that we become familiar with now for sacred geometry stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the optics um, always resemble the architecture of light because um, because and it's always ever so increasingly moving towards it because what it is is it's reflecting it has to reflect the exact image of the architecture of light like your eyeballs the vesica pisces um the the sphere the dilating toroid in your in your uh, um pupils and you look at the geometry of light and it's going to do that. And, and, and our technology is also mirroring the, uh, the, the fabric, um, in a, in a mimicry rods, type of way. You think of the rods and the cones and everything, you know, mm -hmm. how, how they're set up. I'm hearing, I'm hearing music in the background. So it's like, it's distracting, but you, you see the rod, the think of the rods and the cones. And then even like an insect eye, it's got that kind of same, same geometry. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. okay. Could, could I say something about the Hubble telescope? Yeah, definitely. There was something I thought about uh, some time ago, and I, I don't know if this is correct, but it could be. There's a very small chance that it might be correct. I, um, when they first put the Hubble telescope in outer space, uh, it didn't work quite right the way they uh, had designed it, because uh, the lens appeared not to be uh, completely uh, flat. There was a small anomaly in the lens. And Actually, it went. They they the went too far. Came. They went too far yeah. into it. They they uh, did an extra pass when they shouldn't have, and then they made the mirror curve one micron too much or something. Whatever it was, it, it that's what that's what the screw up was. I watched the whole documentary on it. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so far it's it's like I said. There was a a, a mistake with the lens. And the images didn't co come out uh, right. right, and they had to uh, repair it, so improvised uh, repairmen. And then the images were a lot better. But it's still, the, the images we got to see all those years, it, it wasn't like the all to the capability which, which, for which what's designed. It, it, it should have been better, the images, which we've seen uh, in all these years. There was, they repaired it, but, but not to 100%. But You're making me is, question now. I'm getting all conspiratorial, just saying. I wondered if they thought they were doing this so they could stop the electric universe, but you know. No. <laughs> no but what, what I was thinking. Edo's uh, online. Maybe they. Uh, maybe they they think there was a, a, a very small uh, uh, deviation on on the lens, but may, maybe there wasn't. Maybe the lens was the way they uh, they had designed it. Maybe they didn't make a mistake. It, 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 it can always be that, that some of the rules here on Earth are not quite the same as there in outer space, and there's a, a very small anomaly for other reasons. So, and normally, if you look at, at, uh, at the surroundings uh, through a normal uh, lens, with just a camera, you, the anomaly is so small that it can't be detected, but once you go uh, look into very far distances with a very large uh, uh, lens of a telescope, maybe then this anomaly becomes bigger. And for some kind of reason that they don't know yet. So it, it could be that the Hubble was, was 
designed the way they designed it, but there was a, a small difference in uh, how light breaks in our oh, space. Right. They weren't uh-huh. aware of that. And that's why they had to adjust it. I, I don't think so, uh, only because I saw that documentary. Uh, but... Probably not. I, I agree, probably not. But I, I just thought about it. Maybe a, a very small chance that it was that. Because, because uh, um, I've also been thinking, you know, about uh, uh, the redshift and uh, how, sci- how, sci- is, yeah, yeah. how I, sci- I, I, sci- scientific community looked at that and didn't think about the possibility for, hey, maybe the rules in outer space are a bit different for reasons we don't know yet. They didn't look at that possibility. So here maybe, but here is much less likely, of course. No, no, they were... they. Uh, from uh, when I was watching the video, I were you could see how pissed off they were. Even talking about it twenty years later, they were like, and like, you, you, like they they really didn't like they couldn't believe that this thing managed to get ground too deep, this mirror, and made incorrectly with the wrong angle, uh, and it pissed them off so much because of the of the situation. There was. A, I have to tell the story because I experienced it, that I was talking about Pasadena and JPL. We were talking a little bit earlier, but I lived in Sierra Madre, and I was doing. Uh, I, I was. I was working at this fragrance and cosmetics company doing IT stuff, but I was at a bar called the Buccaneer, and there was a guy who was. He was. He was like half Asian and half uh, a European, right? Long. He had this long ponytail. And I just sat down and I was drinking. He wasn't. He was drinking a Sprite. And we just started talking and he was taking a, it was one of those old, like when they first, when you first could buy those kits to build a, like it was a 6502 processor that you could build like something, an Altec computer, like from the seventies. And this was in the nineties where they had, you know, there was decent, things were decent that you could buy in the consumer market. But he was taking this thing and he wanted connected to the internet. He was talking to me about, like the machine code he was writing to get it to to do, you know, just just basic like like in, internet connection and, and you know TCP/IP networking, et cetera. And right. It's like he went on for like twenty, thirty, forty minutes on it. It's like it's like and I'm like, why would you? Why do you want to do that? It's kind of a crazy thing to want to do. And then you know, I just, well, I'm just kind of interested. And, you know, and, and then the conversation drifted off, and he left. And and uh, there's some guys that I other guys I know at the bar that were around JPL working there. I go, they go, do you, you know who you're just talking to? I go, no. I go, you remember that problem with the, with the Hubble lensing and all the optics? I go, yeah. I go, that, that's the guy that fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I saw the tra- the contraption they used. Uh, it was, I mean, I don't know, is he the guy that fixed it, like designed it, or actually the was the astronaut? The, the design. The okay, the design, design. okay. The yeah, design. the design was brilliant. Uh, what he realized he needed to correct the problem was three additional lenses on the focal points of the primary colors to, because obviously this is, this is, uh, this is to make sure that, because as you get a wider lens, you have more, uh, you basically the prism effect starts separating the colors, and you mm-hmm. have to sort of bring them back together again uh, via lensing in the correct way. So that's what he did. He put this lens there, so these mirrors it were off of where they were supposed to be. Basically, the focal point because they dug too deep made the focal point inside, which is good because if they had not dug it deep enough, the focal point would have been on the outside. And they would have had to never. They could have never have fixed it. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's nice that they, they well, nice, I guess. It was good that they made a mistake in that direction. But anyway, because it was angled inwards, the light focused into this giant middle area of the, of the, uh, this, the Hubble. Like it's just a, it's a hollow tube, if you know what I mean. So to get to that lens right. that's reflecting off of to go into the sensor. Well, so they put this device that would go down on a stick. And then it would, because they didn't have a lot of room to get in there, so they had to basically push this in all the way, screw it on or whatever to the, uh, to mount it correctly. I don't know how they did that. And then you push another lever and it would push all of those lenses out. So they all went to 90 degrees off of the stick. And they were all in the perfect position to capture the light so they could go back and, and go right in that lens. 
And so he had to do that three times and do all the calculations and not fuck it up. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm clapping for you, bud. You know, because that's some hard shit. You know, in my opinion, you know, that's precision. impressive yeah. stuff. A, I'm, a, a man's precision. Yeah. You know, and good calculations. And this is why yeah. when I hear people like uh, when I was what talking about uh, Dr. Ed Dowd's there, hey, there's a, a Lichtenberg figure on the moon crater. Do you notice that? Yeah, this is a I, I read across this over. over, over I did too. Of, like, the moon in 4K. Really, I mean, yeah, yeah, and then and then you know it shows the gravitational variation too. You know, so that's pretty interesting. How you could, got that on uh, Becoming Borealis? Yeah, it's on the it's on the, the docket for today. I shared it too. You can see. Look, there's a a crater. That crater with the spire in the middle of it that you can see, the one that just disappeared uh-huh, off the screen. Yeah. Oh, we're hitting the one with the spire too. Yeah, that one with the spire right there, that's because uh, two currents are going around each other and they're spinning around each other and that's what is left. The The part in the middle, they found that this is not shocked at all. That is just a, that is an area. Oh my God, that's so amazing. And then you see it inside. Then you see it again inside. Right? Yeah, that's amazing. There's a, there's a recursion of it. But anyway, it's, it's like a... Uh, it's the area that wasn't removed. Uh, it is the same as the surrounding plateau layers. The rim of the crater is upside down. So that shows that it was sort of pulled up and to the side, if you know what I mean, like it was pulled up and out. And But it's not the same. Uh, and it has that. And then, of course, because it has that little crater and that little spire in the middle, which is why sometimes it gets you get those bullseye craters that Peter was talking about where they go right and they hit that spire in the middle because that's that's the next highest point in the area, right? So, and that's where the next Zorch goes at a lower intensity because the main the main crater took most of the charge off of it anyway. It's uh, very interesting. That's why you get rim hits all the time. Beautiful. Yeah. This this one here, just uh, stri- striking how, how perfectly symmetrical it is. This is Let's see if we get back to it. Wait, yeah, I was going to say, we're getting blurry here. What's going on? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. What is that? Hold on. I assume that they, this is areas where they do not have high-res pictures, I'm guessing. No, no. It's I think I think it's YouTube being... Being a prick? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. This this one. This one. This, this one here. Look how perfect that is. Yep. Just a nice little beautiful zorch. Right. And look That's at the little right. zorches That's... along the edge there. Like, the zorch. Little, little like that little line above it. Is that the technical term for it? Zorch? That's why I like calling them Zorches. Yes. Well, when you see them like made, when you see them made, like people who use it like in dust, right? They take fine dust and they, they try to Zorch it and go, poof, and it makes little, little perfect craters. And like, poof. Yeah. And, and I just, I, and you can just occasionally see a spark. So you get Zorch, 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 Zorch. I just like the term because that's exactly how it looks like to me. Like this whole thing is. Look, there's, there's, there's some big footprints. Look, those are fucking tracks. Somewhere? That was this the moon is, lander. This is, yeah, this is weird. This is weird to me, but this, it's like if you go back to it, we'll go back to that for a second. It's, How did you zoom in so far? We have that good of resolution. We do now. Yeah, this, this is the moon in 4K. This is the new shot, but it's like there's here's here's wait, here's here's the lander, but here's here's the rover. It's like why they leave the why they leave it so far away from it probably ran out of juice. I, okay. Yeah, I guess so. That's and then you'll have to walk back? Well, what were you going to do? <laughs> were you going to wait really? for the that's... lander to come catch you? Dude, that's amazing. So so does Google own this? Is it called Google Moon? Like Google Earth? <laughs> no, no, this is just a YouTube, YouTube like, video. Across YouTube, yeah, yeah I, I posted it. I linked it in my Facebook, I think. I'm, or, or, I, is it... or someone did, and I thought it was totally awesome. Is it new? Yeah, it just came out. Look, it says Google on the moon. Did you see that? Hmm? What? Dude, go back to the other view. Yeah. It looks like Google. Oh, you mean in, in the craters? Yeah, in the craters. <laughs> how, like, they, are, if they always do a play on different shapes that look like it spells Google, so you just yeah. kind of see it throughout the day. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like FedEx. What they got a FedEx there? My question is, how come there's no um, oh, crop yeah, circles? Like this? <laughs> yeah. Kind of see through. Crop circles. No crap. No crops? It, no crop circles on the moon. Well, that would be kind of hard, wouldn't well, it? Or... You know, <laughs> but, well, I, but, don't you need carps or crops to do that? Or? 
if they're aliens and, and making this is my this is my argument here. If they're aliens making these crop circles on the planet, don't you think that they would put a big one on the moon so we could all see it or somewhere? Yeah, yeah. That's a good argument. Oh, oh wait, here's one. Here's one. So, you see it here? See it? It comes out like this, like a like a like a big starburst. Yeah, that's the Tycho crater. This is a, no. This is a crop circle. No, what? <laughs> Actually, big, actually, big, one of the things really one. Yeah. one of the things I really like about this, if you have a keen eye, you'd note that it that actual uh, those lines actually converge on the rim of Tycho Crater and not the center of Tycho Crater. It's not an ejecta; it is uh, electrons pulled across the landscape towards that point. Which wow. Is, and of course, that's the start point is one of the rims, and then it would go because that's the edge, and then it would go and would make a circle, and that's there you go. Hey, I believe it. You sold it. <laughs> well, this is other people have made this observation. I'm I'm only repeating other people's work. Oh, look at those little straight lines. You notice that? Love those. Well, right, right on the rim of the crater, there was clearly some. Uh, we'll call we call them striations oh. when we're walking around, but you know Back when we there. see them in rocks. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. There's, you know, there's some right here. Well, those are, yeah, those are fucking canyons. But I mean, they're obviously made by. Uh, well, I wish we could zoom in on that part just for fun, but. I mean, I, th I thought this part was particularly striking. I think where they do it right at the beginning. No, maybe not. Yeah, yeah this one. This, this area here. Particularly the when they here come on there we go okay one great big pow all across this yeah. is this, this is they're talking about they're talking about this is this is the gravity map well that's interesting because I'm not really interested in gravity but I'm very interested in why this is the it, the, is that they determine these parts to be more dense the red parts I'm guessing to have to have different values of what gravity is. So that's, that's a, towards the pole, that's right? possible. Is that not possible? A plant cannot have different uh, amounts of gravity on a different position. Well, that would depend on what the whether or not gravity is caused by a point source type of thing, like a la Einstein, or are we talking about gravity being something in doing to do with alignment of dipoles, which might be affected like this. This is what these are images that if make it's us question. Like this, then it's not really a point source. Well, it's, of course, it's not a point source. Gravity is only it, we have a description of gravity. We don't actually have any idea of what gravity is. This is when Wall Thornhill comes in and he came up with the idea, saying, "Well, maybe this is some sort of uh, you know subatomic alignment of particles," because we know that alignment of particles is actually the EM force, and it's quite strong, but. We also know that we can make a like a, a electromagnet and has a large electro electric force. But if we use a regular matter magnet, that's just the sort of like the um, this the spinning of electrons inside of a object powered only by the atomic motion, and it still gets pretty powerful, but still cannot pick up a car. You know, if you get my meaning. But this this is this would imply that there is an electrical situation similar to that but on a weaker scale just like there is the difference between electromagnetism which is on a macro scale or our scale and a subatomic scale which still makes a magnet but so is is the coulomb force which is powerful enough to rip up landscapes like this um but it's not uh but the gravity itself is a is a subset of that or something that's incredibly weak version a, of that if, if i put a, a satellite around the moon which which uh, can scan the whole planet. They, the satellite cannot measure gravity on on the surface of the. No, I'm assuming that they are uh, using something they, else to determine how this. How they measure gravity on those different positions here? Well, we you have to do the same thing that we do on Earth, I assume, but I don't know how they do it. I, I assume no, that they make no, some. I, I think they, they probably mean something else with gravity. It's not really gravity like. Uh, the pool of the planet. If you're standing there, that you, that, that would mean that it, on on the red spots, you, your body weight would be a little bit different than on, on the blue uh, locations. Well, I there's a lot I of there's a lot of arguments here. Uh, no, really, yeah. you're right. There's a lot of arguments right like right into this because the question becomes like, is is gravity only a surface effect? 
is it something to do well, with the polarity between our um you know, like our ionosphere and the ground uh how do, how far out does it go what like I what do these the fields work they could have measured this if they had uh actually uh different uh, rovers on different positions of the of the moon but they haven't done that so i think they they mean something else with gravity no, well, maybe they're, ca- they're calling it that, but yeah, I, yeah, I, maybe I, they're I, sensing gravity, something else. Something else, gravity. Uh, it's a, you know what it looks like. This is the the end of a Birkeland okay. current touching the ground. Is what this is? Else. That's it's what it is. It's the it's, it's, it's the basin of a Birkeland current. If you look at it, that's what it is. It's the base of a Birkeland current, and that's what how, why it differs in gravity. And if you look at Donald Scott's model, that's concentric uh, uh, circles and different Just directions like, too. What a Ber- Berkman current yeah. is. Air gravity. Let me, let me get, uh, I'll get the tag, let, let me, cause this is, a, this is obviously a promotional kind of thing, but they do have, they do have audio and I'll share it, the audio. It, it probably means something else. It don't really mean the pull of the planet. Uh, the, let's, let's yeah, see what they're, exactly, let's see what they're exactly saying on it. It was, it, uh, well, uh, hold on. Tell me, tell me if you can I hear this. Question. Tell me if you can hear the audio. It's only a few minutes long. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. The enormous feature, lunar crater, and it's known as the Oriental Basin. Here, LRO's train map combines the surface gravity measurements from the Grail mission. Surface gravity me- uh, map measurements map from, from the Grail, Grail mission. From the Grail mission. The Holy so they, they, Grail they mission. They did measure it on the on the surface. Then. Apparently. Wow. Is there anywhere on Earth that does that? Oh well, yeah. Um, Canada has different gravity than the rest of the planet for some reason. In a, in a circular uh, fashion. Or oh, I don't know. Rings. It does so many positions. It still means something else. Fair um, enough. Do we have, if we uh, have I'll access... I'll look it up. Wait, you you go, go on speaking, and then I'll, I'll look it up on the internet. Well, pause it on top yes. of that thing, because I want to talk about that in this for a second. So, we'll say, go again. Pause it. Pause it on top of the cool colors. Pause it? Yeah, I'll, I'll pause it. Something. I'll pause it. To okay, you pause it. The sky is blue. But the uh, what I'm seeing here, what I'm seeing here, just for so that we can have an idea, is the same situation you have with the uh, the Grand Canyon. Uh, and what I mean by is that you can see how there's a there's a where the like the there's a, obviously a blowback area around it. But let's ignoring that one rim, you can go and see how it goes a uh, layer and it steps down. And then there's a layer, and it sort of steps down, and so on to this wonderful. Because you can even see them, and this is the same type of situation. Because the current is highest in the middle, and it, and the voltage is highest, it can go deepest. But the whole area is how much was excavated, and it was thrown to the sides. And it's vi- and you can see like little little uh, tufts around the edge because they weren't buried by it, so they occurred at the same time. Like those craters with the yellow bottoms down near the bottom here, just near yeah. the bottom. Those were had to happen at the same time as as the main event because you can see that they're not buried. They should be buried well, what, under. What if it's what if it's a continual event? I don't think that it's a. It, there, what if it's not just a main event? What if that is the structure of gravity that we're looking at, literally moving through the pole of the moon? So at the other side, of I the don't moon, know if this is a pole though. A pole. I don't think it's a pole. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I, I think I, this I is an encounter even... when it when it like okay. it got close to another object and it, they pushed off each other and but I mean I can clearly see that some of the big beautiful craters around the rim are this this is the highest area around so they're obviously uh, you know they dug into this uh, but some of them in the middle look flat and buried for example. How, how how are we positive it's not on the oh it's, you just zoomed in and it's. It's somewhere just randomly in the middle. First, yeah, I'm, yeah, and I mean, I, I would, I, I think it's, it, it would be good to verify it's not on the pole, but I believe it's not on the pole. So. Okay, I if also it's axially, if it's actually aligned, then I'm thinking it's totally Birkeland current. Well, I just think this was one event. Uh, the the we, you get different uh, at lower intensities, like current. To, I mean, today uh, at, at this particular time, you get a different sense. There's a South Pole right there. Now What's we know stuff glowing. They think it's water ice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. How much does anybody know? How many gallons of water are on the moon right now? Well, the trouble is, is it really water? Because as far as I know, no, no. Get... There's millions. They say oh. there's millions of gallons, but it's frozen. 
And I've well, heard this time and time again. Yes, but they're using the same formula they use to detect water on comets. And what I mean oh. by that is they determine, like the HO radical that's coming off, they think that it's water because they have hydrogen and you know oxygen and therefore it must be water but what's really happening is that silicates silicates are being ripped off of the surface of the comet and combining with h's as they go flying by and that's so it's probably not that and notice it's coming out of the pole where the, it's electrically currently active just like it should be as we can guess but it's very weak because it's right there on top of the the i mean it's right there on top of the poles and it's only being powered by the earth now kind of thing because it's in the earth field so it has a share of the current with the Earth. So that's a cool crater. Yes. So is there? Do we know if there's any other um, craters that that exhibit that same type of uh, gravity variation with the concentric rings? I don't. I don't personally. I think. I mean, this is the beauty of what we're doing. It's kind of like let's spark off some uh, a little different perspective on on some of these things that are coming out in the mainstream. And because mm -hmm. you know. it just makes me wonder why they just did it for one of the craters and not the whole moon, and shown us the variations, gravity variations across the whole moon surface, not just one spot. It's, it's a you know it's kind of promotional spot though. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's something they put out. <laughs> I, the, the difference in gravity, it's only because of the height. It's only because of uh, the elevation from the from the planet. On, on oh. top of a mountain top, gotcha. the gravity is, is a little bit uh, lower than uh, than at sea level. So right. that, it's, it's just the elevation. That, that's it. That's all. Gotcha. So it would exhibit it all so, across so, the surface. So that you, sure that you see those different colors like red and... Uh, like like that, it, it suggests that there's a big difference in, in gravity, but it, it it's very small. It's just, uh, <laughs> I think it's just a, you think it's just a standing on a mountain top and at sea level. You think that's right? Just that difference. But is that an elevation map? It's pretty, I guess, of elevation maps that maps directly to the elevation. Yeah, because the blue is lower than the than yeah. the red. The red right. is highest. Oh, yeah. So it's just a canyon. It's just like a a canyon, basically. Actually, that's like uh, the one in uh, Ontario. Or Quebec, right. that big ring. So that, yeah. So there would be that type of pattern all over the planet Earth too, because of uh, Earth, or because of volcanoes, and because of the craters that are all already on the Earth. And, it, it, it's just the difference, the distance to sea level at, at the Earth that, mm -hmm. that gives that uh, these uh, free air gravity. Right. Right. I mean, the, this, the, the most striking thing to me is just these, the, 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 the perfection of these circles, you know, as, as, of, of, it, just like you were saying, Peter, it, it's, if you think about what the proposed, you know, the me, meteorite, et cetera, impact thing is, it's not going to make that, it's not going to make that geometry. No, I agree. It's, well, it, it's, it, it's not from the force of the impact, the shape. It's not from the physical impact. It's, it's right. from some kind of explosion, and explosion is some kind of flashy, uh, like like a flash, like a very quick explosion, uh, a spherical. Right, right, right. Well, most probably that. Because so. they're always perfect spheres. You can you can never see the direction of the impact. Right, right. Yeah, very cool. So the if the, Google yeah, the, the because it's so, you need a very intense explosion to be able to create uh, such a hole. Because even a nuclear detonation doesn't do that. So yeah, it suggests it, it might be electrical. But it, it should at least be something that's uh, very intense. Because the, the highest temperatures we find in in lightning. So yeah, yeah, and and, and at the at the. Well, also at the center of nuclear detonations, the the, the flash, uh, the type of light that, that comes from uh, from a meteorite impact. Well, it, it comes close to uh, to looking like lightning. It doesn't look like a normal thermal explosion, but uh, in the first couple of seconds of a nuclear explosion, you also have this intense uh, light. So, it, so yeah, look, it's. A, there aren't that many possibilities. It's at least not a normal thermal explosion. 
lightning and uh, in the first couple of seconds of a nuclear explosion. Those are the two uh, two places where you find the same kind of light. Very intense, very bright. 